Welcome back to Blue Collar Coder. I'm Jack Harrington, and today we're going to answer the number one question that I hear when it comes to module federation, and that's what about Next.js? I think a lot of people think React equals Next.js, and that's not bad since it's a, an awesome platform. So Next.js is definitely going to support Webpack 5. It doesn't today. Can we go and have it expose components and also use components as remote from other applications, even in its current Webpack 4 state? And the answer is absolutely yes. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. It'll work not only for Next.js, but basically for any non-Webpack 5 application. Let's go jump into the code. So this is everybody's favorite, Next.js, and is what we're gonna experiment with today. Now let's go make a directory called Next.js with module federation. And then we're gonna use MPX create next app to build ourselves a next app called host. And let's just go over into VS code. Fire that up and yep, looks just like a next app, awesome. So let me get rid of most of the contents here and then put in a little div and we'll just say this dog is really cute. You should adopt this dog. So now we need to go and get an image of a dog to put up there. And we're gonna create a new component called dog image. And this is what we're gonna share out. So we'll add a little bit of styling to this, make it look good. And we'll go over to my new favorite site, placedog.net, creates dog placeholders. And we'll just go pick a random dog and it's gonna be 640 by 480, so let's adjust the width and the height. And now let's bring it into the main app. And drop it into a div. Oh, that's a, that's a cute dog. Okay, good, okay. Now, we wanna go and expose this thing, so what are we gonna do? So we're gonna create another project, and we're gonna use my WP5 starter kit. We're gonna de-get that into a directory called WP5 host. So this is the Webpack 5 version of the host. We call this a sidecar. So this is a essentially a sub project that has Webpack 5 in it. So the first thing we're gonna do is change the name. And then we're gonna remove some things. We don't need the HTML, we don't need the CSS. Let's get rid of that. So let's change around the module federation plugin so it's called host. And we're gonna expose dog image from the parent directory components and then dog image. So basically going back into our Next.js app and then down to get dog image. And we're also gonna go and get any dependencies out of the parent. So we're gonna look at the parents package.json for our shared dependencies. Now we don't need any components on our own out of here, so let's go and remove some stuff like app.jsx and the CSS and the HTML, and then change our index.js, which has to be there. You have to have some entry point to basically a function that returns true. So let's yarn it, and now let's try to build a development version. And we're getting an issue where it's not doing the translation through the Babel properly, it's not getting the presets. And the reason is that it's looking for Babel RC relative to that directory. And in this case, the host Next.js application doesn't have a Babel RC, so it doesn't pick that up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here into the Babel loader configuration within the Webpack and just add in the options for the Babel loader. Let's fire that up now. All right, that looks good. Great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Servor on port 8080 to go and serve this up as a static set of code. Let's look at it. All right, looks great. 
Looks like the remote entry is looking good. Everything's defined. Well, now we need a consumer. So let's open up yet a third tab in here. And use my dget again. And now we're going to create this thing called peer. This is a basically a peer app that's going to go and consume that dog image. All right, let's change out the port numbers and then yarn start it. Great. Okay, so now we have this peer app running on 8081. And we want to go and say that we want to consume host. And then import that dog image. Use it. All right, let's try it out. And it doesn't work. And the reason for that is because we haven't included the remote entry yet. So let's go and add that script tag. Awesome. This is looking great. But is it live? All right. So let's go make a change to dog image and change that to red. And no, it's not live. And the reason is because we haven't rebuilt the WP5 host application, which is really what Peer is talking to. So let's go rebuild that. And now we get the red frame. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to hit pause here just for a second to kind of graphically show everything that we've done so far. So we've got our Next.js Webpack 4 host application that then has this sidecar Webpack 5 application that goes and extracts that dog image component and exports that into a disk directory that we could then, for example, put up on S3. Then from there, we've got our peer application that goes and uses it in a standard remote style that we've seen so far in module federation. So it essentially puts a Webpack 5 module federation face on a Webpack 4 application. Now, to complete the example, we want to consume a component within Next.js app. So let's go and have peer expose a new component and then consume that on the Next.js side. Let's jump back into the code. All right, so picking up where we left off, we're going to go and export something out of peer. You know, we got this application sitting around, might as well have it bi-directional, right? So let's go and create a dog caption component. It's going to give the name for our dog. Adopt name today. And let's give this dog a name, Sally. Let's see what Sally looks like. All right, you know what that dog looks like a Sally to me. Okay. So we want to expose this. So let's expose dog caption by giving it dog caption as a key, dot slash dog caption, and then dot source dog caption as the location of the code that we're going to expose. But we're also going to add ourselves as a remote and then include ourselves and do the import that way. So let's go back and add on 8080 remote entry to our head. And then go back in the code. And this time we're going to import it from peer. It means basically a loop back on ourselves. Now we get that error right away. We can't resolve peer. Fine. So we need to reboot it. Okay, looking good. Again, with a dog, I could easily call Sally. Let's go check over network. And yes, we are getting dog caption as an externalized component from 8081. Fantastic. So let's go back over into our Next.js app, and we're going to create a new component called Remote Dog Caption. <clears throat> and now we're going to go over to our Practical Module Federation book code. And in Chapter 7, we talk about how to do this. So I'm going to go into Chapter 7 and look at Home Webpack 4, WP4, and go in there to app.jsx. And the first thing we're going to do is grab out this Use Dynamic Script Hook. And what this does is allow us to go and bring in the remote entry 
You don't have to put it into the head section anymore. So let's drop that in there and we'll just walk through it. So we start off by saying that we have two states, ready and failed, and we'll set those to false to start with. And then we start with a use effect hook that will run any time we change this URL. And the URL is the URL of the remote entry.js. Or it could be really any script. This is, this is just a generalized script loader. You can use this for anything. And it's going to create a script tag element with that URL on it. And then it's going to set ready and failed to false to start. Set some event handlers, one for onload that's going to set ready to true when it's loaded. And without failure, then you're ready to go. And then on an error, we're going to say ready is false and failed is true. And then we're going to append that to the head. And if we get unloaded, we are going to have a little function that then removes that child, cleans up after itself. That's nice. Okay, so let's start off making our remote dog caption component. And let's start off by uh, using that script tag. And then pointing it at the 8081 remote entry, which is the peer. You're going to say if we're not ready or we fail, then just return null. Otherwise, we're going to say ready to show this dog caption. And we'll bring that into our app, include it. We'll say name was Sally. Fire it up, and yeah, ready. It's ready to show dog caption. But let's go make sure that we've got that remote entry. Looks good. Looks like we're adding that in there just fine. So let's go back to the code and we can see that we've pretty much done the, the top part of this dynamic widget. So we're going to go and bring in this scope in it. Now, what is this doing? So this is actually setting up sharing. This is the, what happens when Webpack 5, this Webpack 5 does this for you. It's setting up your shared uh, context. And so it, what we need to do is we need to tell that remote entry that we already have React. But one thing we have to change is that there's no window here. There's only global. So let's make sure that we have global. And then what's the scope? So the scope in this is going to be, well, what, what is over to over in Webpack config? It's peer. So let's grab that and put that in there. Great. Now let's take a look and see. So no more console errors than we had before. So that's fine. Well, the next thing to do is now that we've, we're telling it we've got React, We need to go get the component. So again, global. And the scope's right, but now we need a module. So what's the module we're looking for? Well, we're looking for dog caption. So let's go grab that, and it's dot slash dog caption. Now we've got our component. And let's see again. If we run, looks like we're good. OK. Let's use it. Let's just say that we want to send that name. Go and now we're getting an issue where we need to we're, we're dynamically loading this, so we need to wrap this in a suspense. So let's go do that. Let's say we're loading caption. Let's refresh. Hey, it looks great! Awesome. And just to double check that this is live, let's go and make a change. Because she is so cute. Oh my gosh, look at that. Cute bug. All right, let's try one more time. And yeah, oh my gosh, she is so cute as well. Wow, all right. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this one. I really enjoyed making these examples. So if you have any questions, be sure to put those down in the comments down below. And of course, this is the Wednesday video. So there's a Friday video that's a live stream where we do this all again. And you get to ask whatever questions you want. It's been great so far. Come on down the live stream. It's great. Enjoy. It's really fun. The community is great. So jump on in. In the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell. And you'll be notified anytime a new one of these videos shows up. In the meantime, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.